The year was 1997, the movie was The Saint, and for the tech nerd in me, the film was really just part of the story. What really blew my mind was not whether Val Kilmer played a good Roger Moore. Honestly, my eyes were mostly set on that Nokia 9000 communicator. See, for a guy who could barely afford a cheap Nokia 250 at the time, the idea of a phone that could morph into a communicator was stuff of science fiction. It was this device, along with the Palms and the Pocket PCs and the Blackberries, that helped your phone today do so much more. The problem is when the flat slab took over, and really for a couple of reasons. I honestly think the obsession over a larger flat screen got kind of out of hand, up to the point where phones today are massive, and really in ways that aren't always convenient. Like, I get it that having a large screen is good for watching a video, but is it just as useful when you're trying to use it with one hand? Like seriously, think about it. Do you always need your phone to be large, or wouldn't it be great if your phone was easy to handle when you need it, but then be became something else entirely when you need more. This is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, one of the two smartphones I've carried in my pocket for the last two months, and honestly, the one that I would not leave home without if I had to pick. And I know, with the iPhones and the Pixels that just got launched, that's kind of a statement, but it's because I've tested those products already that I find myself believing in that premise more and more. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this is my experience with it after two months of use. To be honest, the idea of a foldable tablet in your pocket is a topic of excess. It's as if companies have decided to address the growing demand for larger screens about as well as lightning hitting the Iron Man suit. Power at 400% capacity. How about that? But if we only look at it as a phone or a tablet, I think we're missing the bigger picture. Surely there's nothing a foldable can do that a flat slab can't do. But if we're real, regular smartphones aren't really great at everything. And I don't think this Z Fold 3 wants to just be a phone or just be a tablet. The most important ideas here are peace of mind and adaptability. I think the first is the most important actually. Buying this phone before was honestly a stretch because it wasn't affordable and there was no guarantee it would survive extended use given its rocky start. This third generation is finally what the first two weren't. It's a bit less expensive and yet manages to solve absolutely every complaint we had with the previous models. We finally get IPX8 water resistance, for example, making me no longer worry about bringing it to the gym. It also brings Gorilla Glass Victus in the front and back match with a stronger armor aluminum on the hinge and the chassis. At 271 grams, it's definitely not a phone that I'd call light, but again, it's not just the phone. Ironically, I think there's more genius to this phone closed than open. See, there's a reason why screens have become taller for the past four years. The narrower the device, the easier it is to hold and use, but the Z Fold 3 takes that a step further. I feel more confident holding this thicker sandwich with one hand, and the taller aspect ratio of the 6.2 inch OLED helps me reach most of the screen without a problem, which is then complemented by a snappy 120 hertz refresh rate. If I'm on the street and need to communicate quick, this feels like the perfect phone to handle. So much so that uh, I haven't really dropped this phone at all so far. This narrow approach is even easier to pocket as it snugs just right at the edge of any pair of jeans. Now, when I'm not on the go, this phone pays perfect homage to that Nokia 9000 from so many years ago. If we're realistic, a tablet does a far better job than a regular phone when I want to either consume content or get productive, and that's really what makes this phone special. At 7.5 inches diagonal, this is almost an iPad mini, but with more resolution, far less bezels, dynamic refresh rate up to 120 hertz, and all the great color this dynamic AMOLED can provide, along with some of the best dual firing speakers I've heard this year. Much more. I feel the 
galaxy digs less into the hand than the narrower approach. And then it's powered by one of the most powerful chips, brings loads of RAM and storage, all flavors of 5G, a decent battery, fast wireless and reverse wireless charging, like even specs that most high-end tablets don't bring. Still, I'm gonna admit that I decided to use this phone very differently. See, this form factor as a tablet reminds me of my days with a Franklin planner, and the inclusion of S Pen support only augments that. I've gone into permanent dashboard mode, where I have my email on one side and then my calendar and my notes on the other. It's invited me to go back to my old stowaway keyboard when typing gets intense, and then I use the S Pen to help me doodle notes or highlights within them. And yes, I wish it worked on the outer screen, but I actually like the idea of using the outside just as a regular phone. This whole use case has even gotten me to remove social media applications from it so that this can be a productivity workhorse that helps me stay focused. And best of all, I don't know how Samsung does it, but endurance on this phone is pretty legendary. I'm not sure if it's the mix of using the outer screen more, but I easily go beyond a day of use with just one charge. Now, it's not necessarily perfect, uh, but uh, we have Android to blame more for that. See, Samsung applications handle multitasking well, but the rest of the Play Store is hit or miss. And then there's the fact that Android tablets don't get much love from developers, with Instagram being exhibit A. And then there's the fact that I find reading magazines to be better on an iPad, for example. Also, keep in mind that 18 by nine video is not necessarily ideal for a 25 by nine aspect ratio, but watching YouTube in flex mode is something a regular tablet can't do. Yes, that inner selfie camera can look pretty funky if you nitpick, but I've learned to get used to it and sometimes I even feel it's not there. Now, photography is probably what I've least done with this phone, if I'm honest. With the exception of the specifications in the telephoto and those 8K capabilities, think of this as a Galaxy S21 Plus and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's no ultra when it comes to capabilities, but what it can do, it can do pretty well and flex mode helps you take shots a regular phone can't help you with. During the day, photos are your typical Samsung with great color saturation and dynamic range. Whether you're using the ultra wide, the standard, or the telephoto, this phone produces some pretty epic photography, even if 10X is really not something I'd recommend. Switch to night mode and the results are pretty good. It's not as fast as the ultra for logical reasons, but if you can keep a steady hand, this phone can pull some pretty awesome results that uh, are even better than some of the iPhone 13 Pro photos that I've taken recently. I also think Samsung does a better job than most at selfies, but from the external camera, remember the internal one is just good for video calls. The outer one handles skin tones pretty well and provides some very nice separation for portraits. Even in video, I think this phone does a pretty good job. I still think Samsung lags slightly behind in the codec when compared to an iPhone, but then that happens with every other Samsung Galaxy, and uh, I think that that gap keeps narrowing down year over year. Stabilization and dynamic range are pretty good, and that even applies if you switch to selfie video. I mean, it's crazy how even today, only Samsung can provide that feature without you stopping your recording. To conclude, I'm gonna go out on a limb and just say that this isn't just one of my favorite phones of the year, but honestly, one of my favorite products. I've been wanting to love this form factor for two years now, and there's always something getting in the way of that. After two months of using this device while testing others, I'd pick this one blindly. I even have a hard time comparing it to anything else because there's seriously nothing else like it out there right now. Of course, this is not a product for everyone. The added durability doesn't mean the inner screen isn't more fragile than others, but then I also feel that being able to close it then protects it, so that's a plus. Yes, I know that buying an S21 Plus and a tablet would be cheaper combined, but then only one would fit in your pocket, and with the Samsung trade-in deals, I mean, adoption is not really that crazy. I know I didn't recommend the first one, and I had some slight reservations with the second one, but it seems that third time's a charm. 
Like the Nokia 9000, this is more than just a phone. It has all the potential of being the only device you carry. After years of carrying a Galaxy Note for those tasks, I have to say that I think that this is what the Galaxy Note should have always been or should be from now on. Let us know if you agree with those thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me take my time with this review because I really wanted to test other phones and convince myself. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.